Okay? So, your subject in our class is the teaching profession. Okay? The teaching profession. In FL Vargas, you're taking earning units and you are actually enrolled in six subjects. If you are a new student, you are enrolled in six subjects. That's equivalent to 18 units. Okay? And all those subjects are categorized as professional education subjects. Okay? Why are you required to actually take those 18 units in Vargas? Because as a non-education graduate, okay, non-education graduate, you are required to take 18 units of professional education courses before you can take the licensure exam for teachers. Oh, that's, that's a basic reason why you are here, okay? Why you are in FL Vargas, why you are taking these online courses with us. You are here because you have to finish 18 units, okay, in professional education courses, basically because you want to take, that's, that's the first step, taking first, okay, not passing yet, no, but taking the licensure examination for teachers. Without taking these subjects, you cannot take the licensure exam, okay? So these 18 units are equivalent to six subjects, and one of those subjects is the teaching profession. Okay, the teaching profession. And you might be wondering, what is the subject all about? Kasi bago ito sa pandinig nyo eh. Siyempre yung mga kurso nyo, okay, yung mga kurso nyo dati ay, ay ibang-iba doon sa pag-uusapan natin ngayon. O kaya yung mga pag-uusapan nyo sa ibang mga teachers nyo, sa ibang mga subjects nyo. Because this is not the course that you finish. Alright? So you are here actually to gain skills, to gain knowledge, and to gain the attitude and behavior, or yung KSA na sinasabi natin, knowledge, skills, and attitudes in becoming a professional teacher. Okay? I repeat, ha? You are here to actually develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to become a professional teacher. At least, that is my assumption. Okay? Kasi alam ko, na hindi lahat kayo, okay? Kasi nabasa ko yung inyong, ano eh, yung inyong sagot doon sa ating classroom registration form. And I ask you if you really intend to become a professional teacher. And some of you did not answer or, or answer that they really don't want to become a professional teacher. They will be using the license, okay? After passing the licensure exam, they will be using the license for eligibility purposes in, in, uh, in the government position. Or maybe... Um, uh, you know, uh, professional development, ay sumagot ng professional development, meron dun si magot na they need it because they want to be, uh, or they want to be updated with teaching because they are teachers now, but their, their, their course before is non-education, non or, or maybe they want to be permanent in the government position, but before having that item, they have to have that license in teaching. For whatever reasons you have, okay, because we have varied reasons, we have multitudes of reasons, my assumption in our class is that you want to become a teacher. My assumption is at the end of this session, at the end of our course, is that you guys are wanting to become a professional teacher because that's what we want to do. That's what I want to imply to you. Why? Because when you take the licensure exam, you don't take the licensure exam thinking that you want to become a policeman. Of course not. Diba? In the licensure exam, you are, you are there on your chair. Okay? You are there seated on your chair looking and facing at the items. Okay? 150 items in professional education and I warn you, it's not very easy. The hardest area in the licensure exam is professional education. Okay? That actually is my lowest when I took the licensure exam. Uh, there are three areas, professional education, major, and, uh, and general education. No? If you are in secondary education, prof, uh, prof ed, major, yung major nyo, and then general education. The hardest among these three is actually professional education. I don't know if others would agree with me, but many, many would say, many would tell that the hardest area in, in the licensure exam is professional education. So when you are there, seated on your chair, 
okay, and taking the licensure exam, you don't think that I'm taking this because I want to be a policeman. I'm, thinking, I, I, I'm taking this test because I want to be somebody else. But I am implying to you that you, you, when you are there, although you have varied reasons, although you have different purposes of taking the earning units in, in Vargas, you have to assume the role of a teacher, okay? You have to assume the role of a teacher because the questions there are higher order thinking skills. The questions there are situational. You are put there in the situation and what would you do if you, de if you are there in the actual situation? So it is important that you feel and you think that you are becoming a teacher. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, once you enrolled in my class, okay, if you are in my class, I would assume, and my assumption is, you want to become a teacher, all of you, even if you don't have, if you have different reasons, all of you will wants to become a teacher because that is what I want you to feel when you are there in the licensure exam, when you are there on your chair taking the licensure exam. Because when you feel that you are there, alam yun ako nung gagawin niyo pagka, isusulat niya yung tamang sagot o isashade niya yung tamang sagot sa inyong answer sheet. So, as far as our subject is concerned, our parameter is set on the subject, the teaching profession. Magkakaiba ang mga subjects niyo, okay? I know that some of you have, were able to meet your professors or were able to, uh, to uh, have an encounter with the modules that your professors have sent to you. Magkakaiba itong mga subjects niyo. Like, for example, in social dimensions of education, you will be talking about um, uh, the four pillars of education, the sociological theories relevant to education. Ultimately, you wanted to describe how education shapes the society and how the society also take an effect to education. Things like those will be discussed in social dimensions. Another example is assessment in learning. In assessment, of learning, okay, in assessment of learning, you will be learning how to develop assessment tools. Okay, what is to be considered when you're trying to develop assessment tools? Like, paano nga ba natin masasabi ng ating mga estudyante ay natuto? Diba? Paano sila, paano natin gragraduhan? Paano tayo magme-measure ng kanilang improvement sa klase? Lahat yun ay matututunan nyo sa assessment in learning. Gumawa ng multiple choice exams, gumawa ng true or false, gumawa ng performance tasks, ng effective assessment. Those things will be in assessment. But what about in the teaching profession? Ano ang matututunan nyo sa akin? Okay? Kasi sabay-sabay ito ha. Tandaan nyo, nung ako ay nag-take ng education and all those who took, who took the education as their first course. Okay? As their first course. Itong mga subjects nyo, yung anime na yan, hindi yan sabay-sabay. Okay? They will have to have different hierarchy. So, nauuna ang teaching profession, susunod ang principles of teaching, and then facilitating learning, educational technology, pero wala kayong edtech dito, um, assess, assessment, and then social dimensions of education. Meron siyang hierarchy, meron siyang level. But today, and in the next months, you are taking them as one. And that's a big challenge. Okay? But it offers you opportunity as well. Why? Because you will be given opportunities to, to think about the relationship of these courses, to think about the integration of these courses. Okay? And that's, that's one way of, of understanding the core of professional education as a whole. Okay? As a whole. Kasi tinitake nyo siya as one eh. So maiisip nyo, you will, uh, one of these days, you will reflect, ala, ganito din yung sinabi ni Sir Brian. Ganito din yung sinabi ni Sir ganito. Ganito din yung sinabi ni, ni Ma'am Tappa o ni Sir Dayag o ni Sir Banatao. And they are all connected. So pag kayo ay nagturo na, all of the things, all of the principles that you have learned from your professional education courses will be there, synergized in application. Okay, that's one opportunity that you can get from taking these courses all at once. Okay, so back to my question. Ano naman ang the teaching profession? Okay, what will you learn from our subject? Okay, so in this slide, uh, the teaching profession as a subject is defined. No? Sabi niya, this course deals with the understanding of the roles of teacher as a person and as a professional within the context of national and global teachers' standards. I highlighted there the roles of teachers. 
at napakaraming tungkulin ng pagiging guro. Ang guro ay hindi lamang tumatayo o pumapasok sa loob ng eskwelahan, ng, ng, ng classroom, at tatayo sa harap ng mga sudyante at magtuturo na. Hindi ganun yun. Okay? Uh, hindi katulad nung ginagawa. Baka ang iniisip nyo ay yung parabang reporting. Nung tayo ay college, di ba, madalas tayong pinagre-report ng ating mga teachers. Okay. Group 1, group 2, group 3. Ito report nyo. Report 1, report 2, report 3. Ganun din ang gagawin ng ibang prof nyo. Okay? So, you expect that in this, in our, in our, in earning units, no? some of your profs will require you to actually uh, present a specific topic. We call it presentation. But in my subject, I would do all the talking. Okay? I would do all the talking to relieve you from stress of preparing your slides, your presentation in your other subjects. But anyway, let's go back to that. Okay, roles of teachers. There are several roles of teachers. Sino dito ang may anak o merong nanay? Sinong may tatay o may kamag-anak na guro? Diba? And you'll always, if, you, if you're really close to them and they would tell you their problems and issues, you would, you would hear some remorse, some regrets why they have entered the teaching profession. You know why I'm a teacher? My wife is actually a teacher in the Department of Education. The first year, okay, in the first, in her first year, it was really stressful. It was really stressful, okay? And the, the way, I mean, the requirement of adjusting to the workplace and, you know, some other roles of teachers. You know, the teacher is not just a teacher. You don't just teach, but you are also a mommy. If you are a female, you are a mommy. You are a parent to your students to your pupils you are also a friend to your students to your pupils you are also a classroom manager okay what do you mean by classroom manager and dun ka para i-manage yung classroom mo oh pag may magulo anong gagawin mo pag may nag-away anong gagawin mo oh you are also a assessor of learning so hindi ka lang magtuturo hindi ka lang mag sasalita sa harap ng mga sudyante mo but you will also look at did they improve? Eh, are they learning? Or is my teaching effective? Things like those are just few of the roles of a teacher and we'll be looking at that in this subject. What are the different roles of the teacher? But in the context of the standard set in our country and globally. Kaya nga nilagay ko dito national and global standards. We have what we call the PPSD or the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. That will be our lesson in the finals. And it will be discussed there. Ano ba ang inaasahan sa mga guro? Okay? Anong standards para sa mga guro? Okay? And educational philosophies and legal thesis. That's a good topic too. Okay? Ano-ano yung mga filosofiya sa pagtuturo ng, na nasa mga teachers? Dahil bawat guro ay magkakaiba. Okay, bawat guro ay magkakaiba. Bawat guro ay may kanya-kanyang point of view, may kanya-kanyang mindset, may kanya-kanyang belief, may kanya-kanyang uh, philosophy kung ano nga ba ang pagtuturo at paano ginagawa ang pagtuturo. You will notice that. When you were in high school or when you were in elementary or even in college, you will have those teachers na favorite mo kasi ganito siya. Ganito yung pagtuturo niya. Meron ka mga teachers na ayaw na ayaw mo kasi ganito yung pagtuturo niya. Meron din naman yan, ah, okay, ah, carry lang natin, keme-keme, sige. Kasi ganoon ang pananaw niya ng pagtuturo. In other words, you will see that teachers are different in terms of their philosophies of education. Their philosophies of education guides them, okay, guides them in understanding how learning happens and how they should approach teaching and learning. Yun ang philosophy. At magkakaiba yan. Meron tayong tinatawag na progressivism, meron tayong tinatawag na perennialism, meron tayong tinatawag na, na essentialism, at magkakaiba ang ibig sabihin ng mga ito. Isms of education. And you have to learn those things. Why? Not only because it's occurring in the licensure exam for teachers, but, you know, it would also help you understand yourself as an individual and as a teacher. Okay? 
Kasi dapat alam mo na kung gusto mo talaga maging teacher ngayon, dapat alam mo kung ano yung philosophy mo ng pagtuturo. Kasi kung wala yan, if you're not aware of your philosophy, then it might really be, you might be standing on a loose ground. Okay? On, on an unstable ground. Because you are here, and then next time you are there, and then next time you are far away. But if you have a philosophy of teaching, you are there standing on a fixed ground. Okay, alam mo kung anong gagawin mo. Alam mo kung saan ka papunta because this is your philosophy of teaching. Okay? Another are legal basis. Okay? May mga batas, may mga provision ng ating gobyerno at uh, laws of the government lang ng pag-uusapan natin, no? Na nagre-regulate sa teaching as a profession. Okay? Hindi dahil ang guro ay isang uh, napaka-importanteng sangay ng lipunan ang pagiging guro at ang eskwelahan ay napaka-importanteng sa ngay ng lipunan. Madalas tayong pinupuna dahil sa ating mga action, sa ating mga gawa, okay? In, with all our actions. Um, if there's one person in a barangay that is truly known by anyone in the barangay, that's the teacher. Diba? Sino ang involved sa lahat ng activities kahit sa labas at sa loob ng eskwelahan, si teacher yan. Ilan ang estudyante mo, kunwari, ikaw ay teacher sa elementary school at meron kang 40 students in a class. Yung 40 na yan at yung mga magulang nila, kilala ka. That you are a teacher. And what, that, what does that mean? It means that they have high regards on you. It means that you have a very high social status. Kung ikaw ay ito, ito ang society, andito ka, oh. social status mo andito, mataas. Kasi teacher ka eh. Oh, you are the teacher. You are the role model. So pag nakita ka na naglalande o kaya nakasuot ng sexy na damit sa, sa tindahan o kaya sa, sa daan at uh, meron, kang, meron kang kasama na naglalakad, what, they, what, what will others think of you? Di ba? E, teacher ka pa naman. So, maraming mga, maraming mga sinasabing, teacher ka pa naman. Di ba? May mga ganun pagkakataon eh. Teacher ka pa naman. Ano nangyari? Oh. Ba't ganyan? Teacher ka pa naman. So, marami tayong teacher ka pa naman. Oh. Teacher ka pa naman. Ba't ganyan ang istura mo? Ba't ganyan ang damit mo? Teacher ka pa naman. Pero, ba't ah, ganyan? Hiwalay ka sa asawa mo. Ganyan ang anak mo. Hindi mo maturuan ng mabuting asal. Teacher ka pa naman kasi... Uh, teacher ka pa naman, eh, eh, ganyan ka magsalita. Things like those. Diba? So, maraming mga inaasahan ang ating lipunan mula sa mga guro. At kailangan natin malaman kung ano nga ba ang tama at anong maling, hindi, uh, anong maling gawain. Okay? Ang tawag natin dyan yung Code of Ethics of Teachers. It, it gives us uh, what should we do, what are the things that we should not do, and what are the things that we can actually do. Okay? Meron din tayong mga karapatan. May Magna Carta for Teachers, for Public School Teachers. Yun, nakalagay doon yung ating mga benefits sa gobyerno, anong pwede nating matanggap, anong kailangan din nating matanggap, yung leave natin, yung sick leave natin, yung mga ganyang bagay, pag-aaralan natin yung mga yan. Kasi as a professional teacher, you should know that too. Kasi hindi ka lang naman doon, hindi mo naman pababayaan yung sarili mo pag nandun ka na eh. Dapat alam mo kung ano ang karapatan mo. And we'll be talking about that. What are the legal basis of education? Okay? Moving on. Uh, this also includes knowledge of core values that uphold the dignity of the teaching profession, discussion of the code of ethics for professional teachers, and awareness and understanding of existing laws and jurisprudence governing professional rights privileges and responsibilities as what i've mentioned okay and teachers roles in the society as transformative agents of change all right so that is the teaching profession yun yung mga inaasahan yung matutunan mula sa akin kung hindi niyo natutunan yan eh magreklamo kayo sir hindi mo naman tinuro yan sabi mo tuturo mo yan pero hindi mo tinuturo okay pero i hope that um baka malay natin may mga pagkakat may mga bagay na mangyari in the next month sa medyo maputo lang ating discussion forgive me with those things but i will i am making sure that i will be sending to you your modules or or i will be uploading lecture videos 
para ganun, panoorin nyo na lang pag may mga chances na hindi ko kayo meet, ma-meet synchronously. Okay? So, I will try my best to actually deliver the instruction that you actually deserve. Okay? So, that's the... That's the... Uh, introduction to the teaching profession. Now, may I ask you guys, if there is one question, when you were there, when you were enrolling, and you were thinking about becoming a teacher, what is that question that you are asking yourself, that you want to ask yourself about teaching? Ano yung tanong na nandoon sa utak nyo na, ano ba to? Ano ba ang teaching? O anong tanong relevant or related to teaching that you had in your mind? Okay. May I, 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 when I, may I hear from one among you? Abigail, Abigail, you are a teacher, right? Abigail, oh, sure. yeah. You are teaching oh, already. Yeah, in, in senior high school, right? Yes. How many years have you been teaching? Um, I've been teaching for three years now, sir. Okay, you've been teaching for three years. Now, <clears throat> I know that, of course, uh, is this your first time to have to 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 take professional education courses? Apo. All right. Now, if there's one question that you have in mind about teaching, what was that? Um. Since I've been teaching for three years now, I've had several experiences mm -hmm. in in the teaching, ano na, teaching field. Uh, so, okay. yung tanong ko sir, bakit ba ako napunta sa teaching or why am I here? Hmm, why are you here? Anong purpose ko na ano na mag, Though I I already told you sir na na ano na nandito ako kasi as a return of service. So, oh, okay. Since mm -hmm. I've I've learned to love I've learned to love teaching na mm -hmm. those three years na. Eh, yung tanong ko sir is uh, ba bakit ba ako nandito? Since I have the purpose na na Nagustuhan ko na siya. Bakit pa ba? Okay, okay. I, I assume you are a DOST scholar, Abigail, right? Opo, opo. Yeah, and then because you have to return the service. I know that because some of my friends are, are having the same situation. But anyway, well, uh, Abigail, I want to ask. With those three years of teaching experience, have you found or have you defined already your philosophy of teaching? Philosophy, sir. Um, para sa akin kasi mm. parang uh, at first kasi hirap talaga ako na ano na mga cook up sa pagtuturo. Okay. Pero since I have co-teachers na tinuturo ano ko sa mga dapat kong gawin and okay. I also have co-DOST scholars na teachers in, in profession din. Mm -hmm. Tinuruan din nila ako ng mga ano mga bagay na dapat kong matutunan. I also uh -huh. Meron din naman kasi kami mga pre-service trainings, in-service mm -hmm. trainings, and the like. So, uh, at some point, natututunan ko din yung mga roles ng pagiging teacher. Okay. Alright. So, That's... yung philosophy ko, sir, is uh, maybe, maybe, um, nabasa ko dun sa, ano, sa isang quote na, okay. you have to, to touch the, the hearts and minds of your students. Students. So, you are guided with that, diba? So, yeah, when you design your instructional material, when you look at what strategies we'll be using in the classroom, you are guided with, with that quotation. But that is actually a learner-centered... Mm -hmm. That's a learner-centered uh, point of view, no? That, that quotation has a learner-centered element. You have to touch the, the lives and the hearts of your... Students. students very learner centered okay the, you put the learner at the center of the learn of the teaching and learning process thank you abigail for your answers now may i know among you who are who is also a teacher now meron ba tayo mga guru na dito let me look at your profile na lang
Okay. So some of you are working in LGU, in private companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, may mga non-teaching personnels then. Lucina, you work in Cagayan National High School? Lucina, are you here? Lucina? Hello, Lucina. Hi, sir. Yes, you work in Cagayan National High School? Yes, sir. Yes, and you are a non-teaching personnel there? Yes, sir. Yeah, and you are you had the chance to observe teachers in Cagayan National High School? Yes, sir. I'm planning po, sir. Mm -mm. Okay, now based on your observation, how do the teachers feel about being a teacher there in Cagayan High? Sir, sa nakikita ko kasi, sir, eh, mm. ngayon, sir, kasi, ano, sir, eh, pandemic, nahihirapan uh -oh. sila ngayon, sir. Uh -oh. Yes, sir. And then, meron kasi yung struggles na, sir, sa modular nila, yung pag-provide yung pag -provide ng mga modules for the learners. Uh -oh. And yung pag-communicate din sila, pag-communicate -pag -pag din nila, sir, with their student po. Yes, and there are problems with those, right? Yes, sir. All right. Yes. So, ayun, makikita natin doon na napakadaming role ng teacher, no? Katulad ngayon, sila magde-deliver yes, ng mga modules sa mga bata. O, oh, imagine those. Imagine that role. So, they're risking their health as well because you don't know kung saan, kung sino ang ma-encounter mo. Baka may COVID cases doon sa lugar na yon. So, things like those. Uh, hindi lang teacher si teacher pero ano na lang ano na delivery girl delivery boy ng mga modules ng mga bata at um, call center agents din yung mga yan kasi pag may mga concern sa mga bata tatawagan yung mga bata isa-isa so those are additional roles because of the the pandemic that we are experiencing today okay so this time we'll be starting with our module 1 Okay. Did you uh, download already the module, the first module? Of course, sir. All right. So, today we shall be discussing the first module in our subject, the teaching profession. And the title of our uh, module is Teaching as a Vocation, Mission, and a Profession. So the learning outcomes for today's discussion is we, at the end of the day, we have, you have to, to define the teaching profession as a vocation, as a mission, and as a profession. Um, you have to um, uh, distinguish, okay, the differences between uh, teaching as a profession, as a vocation, and as a profession, okay? And then letter B is to determine the elements of a profession and reflect on their pursuit of the teaching profession. So in, in our second learning outcome, this actually emphasizes the, the prerequisites okay, of saying that a profession is actually a profession. So what, what makes a profession? Is teaching really a profession? That's the question in, in the learning outcome uh, letter B. And then the third one is to reflect on their pursuit of the teaching profession. Excuse me. Okay. So those are our learning outcomes for today. And, and I hope that you guys will be able to achieve this at the end of our session. So why do you want to become a teacher? And why are you here? These are two questions that has maybe uh, popped in your mind when you enrolled FL Vargas, no? Bakit nga ba kayo, bakit nga ba nasa FL Vargas kayo? Bakit kayo nandoon? Bakit kayo nag-enroll ng earning units? Or bakit nyo gusto maging guro? Okay? So, some teachers are actually teachers by choice. Okay? Pili nila, kagustuhan nila na maging guro. Okay? They were, they thought of it and they realized, okay, I want to become a teacher. For example, Lucina mentioned about 
he, she really wants to become a teacher. No, ay gusto niya maging guro talaga kasi nakikita niya yung mga teachers sa Cagayan High o kaya naman ay ay naiisip niya, ah, paano kaya ang pagiging guro? Parang gusto ko rin maging guro. Okay? So, it is your choice of becoming a teacher. By chance, okay? Oh, by chance. Kasi nga, alimbawa, si Abigail. O si Abigail, siguro at first, hindi niya rin naman gusto maging teacher. Pero kailangan kasi, ayan na eh, may, may opportunity nang binibigay ang DOST eh. Na pag kumaduate ka as a scholar, meron kang opportunity to actually take the job of teaching. Because, It's, you don't go to the process anymore. You don't go to the process anymore of this one, of applying and, and these things. But you are there. That's an opportunity for you. So, Abigail, grab that opportunity. But at first, siguro, I'm not saying it's Abigail thinking, but at first, someone like Abigail will not, does not have that first choice. Oh, okay? does not have that choice to actually go to teaching. But because the chance was there, you were able to grab it. So some teachers are teachers by chance. But unfortunately, some teachers are teachers by force. O anong ibig sabihin niyan? O by force kasi nga ay nanay ko teacher, ay tatay ko teacher, mga kapatid ko teacher, kahit hindi naman hindi ko naman gusto maging teacher, sige mag-edu na lang ako para ako maging teacher din. Pero at, at in the inside, ayaw niya naman talaga maging teacher. Pero dahil Uh, ang kanyang society, ang kanyang lipunang ginagalawan ay dominated ng mga guro na force siya na ah, ito, I have to adopt with the society because that is what the society wants me to become. So, you're becoming a teacher. So, it's becoming a teacher by force. And then last but not the least is accident. <coughs> you are a teacher by accident. Oh. Alimbawa, you went to Thailand. No, you went to Thailand. And then, uh, of course, as a Filipino, you are really good in speaking English. You know, Thai people have very high regards with Filipino people uh, with regards speaking in English. So if you go to Thailand and then, all right, there is your friend, may, may pakaibigan ka doon na, na mayroong experience sa pagtuturo. And sabi niya, anong ginagawa mo? While you are here as a tourist, pwede ka magturo at mababayaran ka. So, you're not actually there to be a teacher, but by accident, okay? Wala kang preparation as a teacher, eh. The chance was not given to you, actually, at that very moment. But you were given that task by accident, okay? In fact, no, pag kayo punta ng Thailand, okay, pwede kayo magturo doon. There are many schools who are hiring Filipino teachers to teach English, even if you are not an education graduate. As long as you have a very good Uh, communication skills using the English language. Okay, so if you will ask yourself, are you a teacher by choice? Are you a teacher by chance? Are you a teacher by force or by accident? I will not know the answer. It's only you who will know the answer. So when I ask you, okay, why are you earning units in education? This is the answers. These are the answers from your classes, from all my classes. No, I had 95 responses. And to become a professional teacher, 74.7%. That's very good. Okay? Kasi at least uh, three-fourth, okay? Or, or 75% among you are here because you want to become a teacher. Look at this, no? To acquire the license for eligibility, that's 14.7%. I cannot blame you because some of you are in the position already and you really have to have that license in order to have eligibility. Okay? But, shockingly, katulad si Lucina, ay sino ba to? Si, si Abigail, sabi niya, I'm looking for my purpose. 8.4%. So, hindi niya pa gusto maging teacher. Hindi niya pa, wala pa siyang plano. Pero, nandito siya kasi, pinahanap niya yung sarili niya. Nagsosol searching siya. Di ba? What, that's very uh, romantic. I mean, very literature-like. So, poetic. So I'm looking for my purpose, 8.4%. And I hope that if you are someone who is really looking for your purpose, I hope that I will be able to help you look for your purpose action. Okay? So, walang to sumagot ng trip ko lang, and that's very good. Kasi kung trip mo lang talaga, eh, how will you be serious about this? Development of my professional career, meron din sumagot, and professional growth. Now, interestingly, these are your answers when... In the interest in teaching inventory. So I ask you, what interests you? Okay, ano ang nag-trigger sa inyo to become a teacher? 
And look at your answers. Oh, ang pinakamataas ay influence of former teachers. You see? Okay? Influence of former teachers, that's very high. 3.69. Strongly agree. Work with children and young adults. Very high. And value to the society is what I've told you. Okay? The so teachers have high social status, have high social regards. But the lowest is tinangay ng kaibigan. <laughs> you disagreed with this. Then that's I, I, that's good, okay? I, pero may mga nag-agree din na, may mga nag-strongly nag, uh, agree din na tinangay lang sila ng kaibigan. So, uh, I've been teaching in FL Vargas for the past four years already as a part-time teacher in professional education courses. And whenever I interview my students, okay, whenever I ask them, why are you here? And, and I would always, I would jokingly say, tinangay ka lang ba ng kaibigan mo? And they would really laugh at it. And I, I noticed that some really are really tinangay lang ng kaibigan. And like, uh, classmate niya nung college, uy, tara, mag-college tayo, tambay tayo ngayon, lahat ng trabaho, mag, ano muna tayo, mag-earning units tayo. So, sige, tara. Oh, things like those. Okay? Family influence, mm -hmm. summer vacations. Okay. You know, teachers have uh, summer vacations, but you disagree with that. Mm -hmm. Content, interest, self-growth, job security and other careers not considered agree. But I, I really like this, the results that you are influenced by your former teachers. That's why you are here. You see, there, the influence of a teacher is actually eternal. Okay? Um, kahit yung grade 1 teacher mo, grade 2 teacher mo, natatandaan mo pa rin hanggang ngayon. And you, you can remember your experiences when you were in elementary and high school. So you would really tell that the influence of a teacher is really infinite. Okay, it would go through time. Kahit patay na si teacher, maaalala at maaalala mo siya na, ala, siya yung teacher na nag, ano sa akin, nag, ano, nag, nag-cut ng buhok ko. Kaya namalo sa akin. O piningot ako. Things like those. Okay? But more than that, yung maintin, malalaman natin at ma, matatandaan natin yung mga naitulong ni teacher para sa atin. Ay, ito yung sinabi ni teacher. Ay, ito yung sinabi ni teacher na dapat kong gawin. Kaya ginagawa ko na ngayon. Ay, tinuro ni teacher ito. Okay? So, influence of former teachers. Now, before we proceed, okay, uh, in discussing the teaching as a profession, as a mission, and as a vocation, I would like to differentiate first what education and schooling is. Okay? What education and schooling is. Anong pagkakaiba ng education sa schooling? Kasi, andito kayo to for education and not just for schooling, okay? So when we talk about education and schooling, education is a wider concept, okay? It's education is a wider concept that includes both formal and informal means of gaining knowledge, whereas schooling is the first stage of formal education in most countries. Generally, meron kasi tayong tinatawag na formal education and informal education, okay? When we talk about formal education, these are our educational transactions that are happening inside the school. Okay? Inside the school. That's formal. Pero yung informal, ito yung mga paraan na kahit na saan ka, pwede ka matuto. Nasa Facebook wall ka man, nagbabrowse ka lang, you can learn. Um, nasa simbahan ka, you can learn. Pag nasa palengke ka at nakikinig ka ng pagchismisan ng mga tindera sa palengke, may mga pagkakataon na, ah, ganun pala yun. Ah, ganun pala yun. You can learn. So, informal education happens anytime and it happens anywhere. But formal education is so strict in terms of schedule and place. Okay? So, but when you talk about education, it encompasses both. Both formal and informal means. So, in other words, education is a wider, it's a broader concept than schooling. So, schooling only happens in school. But education happens everywhere and anytime. Okay? So, other than schooling, there are higher levels of formal education institutions such as university or the graduate school. So, schooling has several levels. It could be elementary school, um, high school, and then we have university uh, education or higher education, uh, TVL education, and then graduate school when you're taking your master's or your post or your doctoral degree. Okay? So, uh, I, 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 uh, speaking of this, I encourage you guys, if you're not taking your master's yet, um, it's it's an edge okay pag kayo ay mag pag kayo ay mag apply sa DepEd makakatulong yung master's degree niyo so habang habang kayo ay nag nag earning units kung kaya niyo pa pwede kayo mag-enroll ng master's degree niyo pag kayo ay 
ano na, mag apply na sa DepEd, may master's degree na kayo, that's an additional point to to you when you apply for, for a position there. Okay? Uh, I finished my master's. I graduated in 2014, and I finished my master's in 2016, and I just finished my PhD last month. Uh, last year, I should say last year, uh, in 2020. Yeah, 2020. So 2020 was not bad for me at all, but uh, was a month. It was the year that I finished my my doctorate degree. So schooling is happening inside the four premises of the classroom or the school itself. Okay. So formal means of education, like schooling, vary from that of informal because of the pre-scheduled content, administration, and levels that lead to one another. Let's let's dissect these things now. So formal education has pre-scheduled content. Pag pumasok ko ng school, alam mo, ah, ito ang subject ko ngayon. Ito ang araw na pag-aaralan ko itong subject na ito. Merong schedule. Tama? Katulad ngayon, oh, 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock tayo. May schedule tayo. Pagdating ng 10 o'clock, ibang subject na naman. Pagdating ng 2 o'clock nyo, ibang subject na naman. So may mga, may mga ganyang scenarios sa formal education. There's a pre-scheduled content. Pero pagdating natin sa informal, halimbawa, nasa bahay ka, Okay? Meron ka bang listahan kung anong dapat mo matutunan? Ay listahan ba si nanay mo kung anong dapat mo matutunan? Wala eh. Unless ang listahan ay, oh, anong oras, magugas ng pinggan, maglaba, magbanlaw, paglinis ng bahay. Kung gano'n yung listahan mo, iba na yun. Pero in informal education, there is no pre-scheduled content. Like for example, you're, you're watching television. Like, ah, ha, ganun pala yun. You're watching Discovery Channel. You don't know what you're going to learn in Discovery Channel, but you're just watching there. But while you are watching, you have these realizations. You have this aha moment. You have this discovery learning moments. Like, ah, ganun pala yun. Ah, ganun pala mag-mate ang frogs. Ah, ganun pala mag, ano, mag, uh, guma, uh, ganun pala ang water cycle, for example. So, for whatever things you can learn from Discovery Channel. Okay, so, it's informal because there's no pre-scheduled content, okay? Like, when you go to the church, you don't know kung ano naman sermon ng pari o anong, ser- anong uh, gospel ni, ni pastor, right? So, you'll not know those things. Um, it's unexpected. There's no scheduled content for them, but for you as a, a listener, as an audience, you don't have that sense of, of uh, pre-scheduled content, okay? Formal education has formal administration, diba? Uh, pag nagpa-test, kunwari, oh, ito, may formal way of administering the test. Ganito ang gawin mo, ganito, ganyan. Pero sa informal, wala yan. And formal means of education have levels that lead to one another. Like, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3. Pag di ka pumasa ng grade 1, di ka pwede mag-grade 2. Pag first year high school ka, hindi ka pwede, oh, grade 7 ka, hindi ka pwede mag-grade 8 kung di mo pinasa ang grade 7 mo. Pero sa informal education, oh, hindi ka pwede maghugas ng pinggan kung hindi ka marunong mag- Laba. Hindi naman ganun yun. Diba? So, at na hindi ka marunong magugas ng pinggan, paglalabahin ka pa rin ng nanay at tatay mo. Okay? So, there is no, there is no uh, hierarchy. There is no levels that lead to one another. Okay? <clears throat> you are there. You are learning. In any time, anywhere. You are learning. And there is no pre-scheduled content. We call that informal education. Okay? Now, when education concerned as a whole, it includes both this formal and informal means of acquiring knowledge. So, yun ang pagkakaiba ng education at saka ng schooling. Okay? So, ikaw bilang isang teacher, hindi ka lang nandyan para sa schooling ng mga bata. But you are there to educate your learners. So, it's not enough that you are there to teach them what the subject is all about. What's the content of the subject? But as a teacher, you are there to actually educate them. Not just in the mind, but in their heart, in their soul, and in their body. Okay? Kaya nga, meron tayong cognitive domain. May psychomotor domain tayo. May affective domain tayo. John Dewey himself mentioned that education is not Li- is not a preparation for life, but education is life itself. That's what she said. Ba? So when you are there in school, you don't have to think about, okay, I just have to school. You are just schooled. Maraming mga tao ang schooled, but they are not educated. 
Okay? Maraming mga tao ang schooled but they're not educated. Anong pag anong ibig sabihin nun? Ba in 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 a uh, in natural sense no? Uh, pag sinabing ganun, eh, ibig sabihin walang parang walang walang feelings. Nagiging intellectual monsters yung mga tao. Pag you are just is fooled but you're not educated. Ang what really leads you with your decision is just your mind. But you're not using compassion. You're not using your feelings and emotions in making decisions. So many people are schooled but they're not actually educated. But as a teacher, we don't really we don't just aim to school our learners, but you have to educate your learners. So, is teaching a profession? Not the question. Now, ang teaching ba ay isang profession? Well, before, okay, before, RA 7836 is the law that provides that teaching is already a profession. Okay? RA 7836 or the Teaching Professionalization Act. Now, ang sabi doon, teaching is indeed a profession. Before that, meron tayong RA, uh, Presidential Decree 1007 in 1977, provided by President Ferdinand Marcos during his time, professionalizing teachers. But before that Presidential Decree 1007, ang teachers ay hindi natin masasabing profession. Okay? Hindi natin siya masasabi o matatawag na profession. Um, what best describes teachers before the the presidential decree passed by um, signed by President Marcos is uh, persons in authority. So teachers are persons in authority before, but because of of PD 1007 and RA 7836, teaching has become a profession already. Okay, so ano nga ba ang Profession. Ano nga ba ang profession? What makes a profession? Lahat ba ng trabaho ay masasabi nating profession? O may mga profession o, o lahat ba ng profession ay jobs? Are all jobs professions? Or are all professions jobs? Okay? Now before that, may I ask one among you to answer my question? What is your What is your opinion about this? What makes a profession? Are all jobs professions? If you are asked, like, what's your profession? Okay, let's give an example. No offense, hypothetical example lang to. You are a secretary in a office, in an office. You are the secretary of the head of a certain office. Now, is that a profession? Anyone from the group? Who is answering? Sino yung sumagot kanina? Me, sir. I think it's a profession because it's a paid occupation. It's a paid... Occupation. Oh, it's a paid Or occupation. A okay. So, Sherry Ann answered that, uh, yes, it's a paid occupation. Mm -hmm. All right. So the basis is that it's a career, it's a paid occupation. There's a new remuneration of the service given. That's why it's a profession. About the others. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sherian. You're welcome. Yes. Another answer. Okay. Now, let me go back. Ah, Senator. Yes, sir. Now, I must tell you guys that no, not all jobs are actually professions. Okay? There are certain prerequisites to say that you, that particular job is actually a profession. Okay? May mga qualities, may mga descriptions na dapat ang isang trabaho ay ma ay ay ma ma, ma how do you call this? Ma satisfy in order to classify that job as a profession. Okay? So for example, balik tayo dito mamaya, no? A profession should have the following characteristics. Number one, it requires an intensive education and training. 
Okay? So, merong intensive education and training. Number two, it is licensed and certified. I repeat, no? It is licensed and certified. So, if there is a licensing system, then it can be considered as a profession. Hindi yung driver's license, ha? Alibawa, sa teaching, meron bang lisensya sa pagtuturo? Meron. Sa pag sa doktor, meron bang lisensya sa pagdo-doktor? Meron. Pag nurse ka, meron bang lisensya sa pag nurse Yes, meron. So, we can only consider a profession, a profession, if it has a licensing system administered by any accredited organization by the state. <coughs> Tayo, the licensing system is administered by the PRC or Professional Regulatory Commission. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, in other words, ang pagiging guro ay isang profesyon dahil merong disensya na ini-issue para sa atin. Okay? So, that's be, having license and being certified. Now, balik tayo dun sa example natin. Kapag ikaw ay isang um, secretary o ikaw ay isang waiter, waiter sa isang uh, hotel, restaurant, five-star hotel, oh, can you consider that as a profession? With these definitions, with these qualifications, we cannot consider that it is a profession. Okay? But with all your rights, okay, I, I, uh, by due respect to your rights or to your opinion, you can still call yourself as a professional. Okay? You can still call yourself as a professional because that is your job. Eh? Yeah, you work hard for it. So even though there is no license, even though there is no certification, you can still call yourself as a professional. Okay? But if we classify the job, okay, the job itself, if it's a profession, we have to strictly set some parameters in classifying a job as a profession. So here, sabi niya dito, it should be licensed. It should be certified. Next, it has an effective entry procedure. May mga pagdadaanan ka para makapasok ka sa profession. Kasi kung basta-basta ka na lang makapasok dun, eh, hindi yung profession. Okay? Letter D, it is guided by some codes of conduct. Merong code of ethics, merong code of conduct na ito yung dapat gawin, ito yung hindi pwedeng gawin. Tayo mga teachers, may ganyan tayo. Ang mga guro ba, ay may mga bagay na dapat hindi gawin? Yes, meron. Bawal magampanya, pag-eleksyon, bawal magtinda sa loob ng eskwelaan, pag hindi, pag office hours, marami pang hindi pwedeng gawin. Ang mga guru, ang mga ang mga doktor ba ay mayroong code of conduct din? Meron. Ang mga nurse ba ay may code of conduct din? Meron. So if you look at all the professions registered in the Professional Regulatory Commission or the PRC, lahat yang mga yan ay mayroong code of conduct or code of ethics. Okay? So if wala tayong code of conduct, hey, hindi yung profession. Okay? Panglima, it has a strong body protecting its interest. Merong isang uh, sangay ng lipunan na, na ang tungkulin ay protektahan yung karapatan o interest ng mga guro. So katulad niyan, meron tayong party list na para sa mga guro. Meron tayong board for professional teachers. Meron ding board for doctors. Merong mga grupo, Philippine Nurses Association. So may mga asosasyon, may mga organization na promoprotekta sa karapatan at sa interes ng mga professional na ito. So, yun ay isang qualification din para matawag natin na yung isang trabaho o ang isang occupation ay matatawag na profession. Okay? It is independent and has freedom of practice. Okay? Merong freedom of practice. Like teaching. Eh, hindi ka pwedeng madiktahan ng sino man. Kasi teacher ako eh. Alam ko kung anong ginagawa ko. Doktor ako. Kasi, kaya alam ko kung anong ginagawa ko. So, there is an independent practice or okay? independent practice it is a life chosen career for its practitioners so if you are if you are a teaching if you are a teacher and you look at it's a life chosen career diba ang mga teachers ngayon pag teacher ka na teacher ka na forever eh. may mga rare cases kung saan ang teachers pag nakapasok na sa public school eh nagre-resign rare lang yung mga ganun pero most of the teachers who go there and who enter the public school they will be teachers for the entire for their entire life. 
okay because they they choose that they chose that career as a life career okay then it is highly regarded in the society so yung mga professions na yon ang tingin ng lipunan ay napakataas halimbawa ang mga doktor di ba we have high regards with the doctors with nurses di ba pagka nga sa tradisyon nga eh parang kultura ng mga Pilipino na pag ang isang pamilya ay nakapag-graduate ng teacher, ng doktor, ng abogado, ng nurse, ng medtech, eh karangalan para sa kanila 'yon, 'di ba? Oy, uh, kumusta 'yung anak mo pagka nagka-reunion ganyan? Oh, yun, medtech na siya, oh, nurse na siya, 'di ba? Magandang pakinggan. So, meron tayong kaisipan na itong mga trabahong ito ay merong mataas na estado sa lipunan. So, pag ganun, pwede natin siya matawag na profession. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no, ito yung mga qualifications ng isang profession. So, ang pagtuturo ba, is teaching really a profession? The answer is a quick yes. It is yes. It is a profession. Una sa lahat, merong lisensya na matatawag. Okay? Pangalawa, it is regulated by the state. Okay? Pangatlo, merong grupo na pumoprotekta o uh, uh, nagre-regulate doon sa profession. Okay? At uh, pang-apat, merong code of conduct. Okay? May code of conduct. So, itong apat na to, pwede na to eh. Okay? Kahit hindi mo tandaan tong maraming yung walong ito, yung apat na yun, pwede na yun. Okay? Una, it's regulated by the state. There's a licensing system. There's a group that guides the, the professions, the professionals, and then there is a code of conduct. O pag meron ito sa isang trabaho, matatawag natin na that job is actually a profession. Okay? So you can call yourself, I am a professional. But by all means, no, even if your job is not a profession based on these qualifications, you can still call yourself as a professional. However, there are just some basis for telling or identifying that a job is indeed a profession. So for example, uh, if you are a uh, waiter or a waitress in a in a hotel, question, is there a license? Is there a certification? Yes, there could be a certification. But is it issued by the state? Gobyerno ba ang nag issue nito? Or is it a private organization? That's a question. Pangalawa, is there a code of conduct? Meron. Pero is it a standard code of conduct? What is true to all is true for many. Hindi eh. Kasi may mga hotels na ito code of conduct niya. Ito ang hotel na to, itong code of conduct. So magkakaiba. Okay? Meron bang national organization for waiters and waitresses? I don't know of one. Okay? And then, um, is it regulated by the state? Perhaps, yes. So some of the qualifications were not met and therefore we cannot consider that job as a profession. But I was telling you, by all means, you can call yourself as a professional. A professional is different from profession. Okay? So, ang context natin na pinag-uusapan dito ay kung yung trabaho ba ay matatawag natin profession. Well, teaching is an example of a profession. Okay? So, dito, makikita natin yung tinatawag nating teacher development map. Ito ay um, uh, ginawa o ito ay kasama doon sa tinatawag nating NCBTS or National Competency Based Standards for Teachers. Okay? So, here, um, makikita natin kung ano yung proseso na pinagdadaanan ng mga guro pag sila ay gusto magturo sa public school. Una sa lahat, kailangan meron kang entry to teacher education. Dito papasok yung tinatawag nating it requires an intensive education and training. Okay? Meron ka dyan. Four years. Kung ikaw ay eduk, four years ka mag stay sa Teacher Education Institution. TEI stands for Teacher Education Institution. HEI stands for Higher Education Institution. Lahat ng TEIs ay HEIs. Pero hindi lahat ng HEIs ay TEIs. Tandaan niya yan, ha? Kasi may mga HEIs, katulad ng... Uh, hindi ko alam kung anong... Myla Rosario yata. So, Myla Rosario is an HEI. But does it offer teacher education as a course? No. Okay? So, HEIs are the universities, are the, are the colleges. Tawag natin sa kanila HEIs or higher education institution. Pero, HEIs who offer, okay, who offer 
teacher education as a, as a program, we call them PEIs or Teacher Education Institution. So, is FL Vargas an HEI? Yes. Is it a PEI? Obviously, yes, because you are here. Okay, you are being trained as a teacher. So, all HEIs, uh, all TEIs are HEIs, but not all TEIs are, I mean, not all HEIs are TEIs. Okay, so take note of that. So, you are there entering the teacher education. <clears throat> After that, you proceed to pre-service training. Meron tayong practice teaching na sinasabi nila noon. Okay? So, pagdating ng fourth year, magpa-practice teaching ka, yun yung tinatawag natin pre-service training. Pag nasatisfy mo lahat yan at ikaw ay graduate na sa HEI o kaya sa PEI, pwede kang mag-take ng licensure exam. PRC ang mag-regulate niyan. So, yung mga agencies na nandito sa taas, Commission on Higher Education, ito yung mga concerned agencies in the development of teachers. So, PRC is a uh, task for teachers, teacher licensure. So, sila nag administer ng licensure exam. Pag pumasa ka na dito, pwede ka nang mag-apply sa DepEd. So, merong recruitment, selection, deployment. So, DepEd ang, ang may hawak niyan. Pag pumasa ka, okay, nakapasok ka dun sa tinatawag nating RQA or Registry of Qualified Applicants. At Tinawagan ka ng principal. O oh, sige, ganito. Punta ka na dito sa school. O oh, pagdating doon, siyempre, orient ka muna. Tapos magkakaroon kayo ng induction program. Siguro months after you were hired. Okay? I don't know if it's three months or two months. Pero may mga induction program per division. Okay? So, teacher induction. And then pagkatapos niyan, uh, of course, hindi matatapos ang professional development. Kaya meron tayong tinatawag na CPD or Continuing Professional Development. So habang ikaw ay nagtuturo, may inset trainings kayo, may in-service trainings kayo, may mga seminars kayong pupuntahan para ma-improve mo yung kakayahan mo o yung skill mo sa pagtuturo. So yan. And then, pag nagawa mo yan, Continuous Professional Development, na-promote ka from Teacher 1 to Teacher 3, and then 5 years as Teacher 3, magiging Master Teacher 1 ka or Master Teacher 2, Pwede ka nang mag when you turn the age of 60. Okay? Ang 60 ay yung retirement age. Pero pwede ka pa mag-continue magturo hanggang 65. So the mandatory retirement age is 65. But the retirement age is 60. So pwede ka na mag-retire as 60. Pero pag gusto mo pa magturo, eh, okay lang. But you cannot teach anymore beyond 65. So, 65 is the mandatory retirement age. May batas na sinusulong na 56 years old ang magiging retirement age. I hope that that will be passed para naman mag-enjoy natin ng buhay. Sa so ito, base ito sa NCBTS. Okay? National Competency-Based Teacher Standard. So, ito yung process na pinagdadaanan para ikaw ay maging public school teacher. Okay? Kaya nga, ito, it has an effective entry procedure may procedure kung paano ka makakapasok doon sa profesyon. Okay? So, ito yung sinabi ko kanina, 1006, um, uh, my bad, no, it should be 1006, not 1007, and then RA7836, ito yung the, 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 the acts that professionalizes teachers. Okay? That is in your module, you have to read that. So, let's now talk about teaching as a vocation as a mission, and as a profession, okay? Uh, I will just be very quick about this because, of course, this is very easy to understand naman. So, when we talk about teaching as a vocation, sabi ni Thomas Merton, sabi niya, a man knows when he has found his vocation, when he stops thinking about how to live and begins to live. Very nice, di ba? Di mo naisipin na para saan ba yung buhay ko? Paano ba ako mabubuhay? Ano bang gagawin ko? So pag ganun at nagsisimula ka na mabuhay, alam mo na ang kasagutan sa mga yan, you can consider already teaching as a vocation. So ladies and gentlemen, vocation came from the Latin word vocare. Okay, vocare, which means to call. Ikaw ay tinawag. Okay, ikaw ay tinawag. So parang yung mga pari natin, they, they, can, they consider the teaching as a, as a uh, priesthood as a vocation because they were called by the Lord. Okay? So, teaching is more than a noble profession. It is a vocation or a calling. So, siguro, nung ikaw ay natutulog, eh, nung nag-enroll ka sa Vargas, eh, may bumulong sa'yo, di ba? 
mm, may bumulong sa'yo na, ano, na bosses. Mm, mag-enroll ka sa Vargas. Mga ganun. <laughs> Tumuha ka ng earning units. Mag-take ka ng red. Mga mga ganun instances. I'm just joking. But if you consider it as your calling, we call that vocation. Okay? So if you think that you were called to actually do this, that some voices out there would say, okay, you have to teach. This is your calling. That's a vocation. Okay? So if there's a call, there must be a caller, di ba? Pag may, may call, may caller yan. And uh, in, for Christians, the caller is God, our God. And for Muslims, the caller is Allah. Okay? So, and if you are called, there must be a response. So you have to respond to. Okay? So believers in the supreme being will look at his voiceless call to have a vertical dimension. Non-believers, the call is experienced but viewed solely along a horizontal dimension. It is like man calling another man, never a superior being calling man. So when we talk about the believers, the calling is, has a vertical dimension. Ibig sabihin, it came from the upward. It came from the top. Okay? It came from someone supreme than you, higher than you, or powerful than you. But for non-believers, those who are atheists, okay, who don't believe in the supreme being, it's a horizontal dimension. And ang ka-level nila ay, kaya nga pag tinawag na horizontal, ka-level mo tao, ang tumawag sa'yo tao mismo. So people have, have motivated you or have called you, okay, go get yourself a, a earning units and then proceed to teach you. That's what we mean for non-believers, for atheists. But for theists, okay, for those who believe in God and in supreme being like Allah for the Muslims, it has a vertical dimension. That someone higher than you, someone more powerful than you, has called you to become a teacher. So if that's what's happened to you and you are here now, you can consider teaching as a vocation. It's a calling. Okay, it's a calling. So vocation is a strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation. And unlike any other profession, teaching requires dedication and service in order for an individual to be considered as a real teacher. Okay? So when someone practicing teaching as a vocation, they teach with dedication. So magkaiba kasi yung teaching lang na nandun ka lang na nagtuturo. Pero if you're dedicated, you can feel really the heart or the compassion towards the, the learners. Okay? So in summary, vocation is only for some who are really dedicated, not just to work, but also to serve other people. So dedication is very important. To, to actually drive you in continuing. Kasi napakaraming frustrations ng pagiging guro. Mahababa ang sahod, ang daming ginagawa, ang daming sinusulat, ang daming ina-encode, ang daming... Tin- Kasi if you're a teacher, you're a teacher there 24 hours. Eh. Hindi katulad ng ibang professions. Na pag nasa trabaho ka, ito ka. Trabaho mo yan. Nandiyan ka. Pagdating mo sa bahay, eh, tao ka na ulit, di ba? Eh, nanay ka na, magulang ka na, anak ka na. Hindi mo iniisip yung trabaho mo, yung day job mo. Pero pag ikaw ay guro, umaga pa lang, alas 5 pa lang, mag-prepare ka na para pumunta ng school. Pag uwi mo, teacher ka pa rin. Eh, bakit? Eh, dahil magre-record ka pa, mag-check ka pa ng mga modules ng mga bata. Tatawag ka pa, o anak may module kang hindi na submit, submit mo naman kasi blanco yung grades mo. O, ano yung ilalagay ko sa class record ko? Mga ganun. So, pag day job mo, teacher, pagdating mo ng bahay, teacher ka ba din? Okay? But, if you're really dedicated, then there's nothing that will stand in your way, okay, in becoming a teacher. So, another is this. Here is the test to find whether your mission on earth is finished. If you're alive, it isn't. So, sabi niya dito, Ang pagiging guro ay isa ding misyon. Pag buhay ka pa, okay, hindi pa tapos yung mission mo, sabi ni Richard Back. So if you're dead, then maybe you can tell yourself mission accomplished. Diba? Anyway, so teaching is a mission. Okay, it came from the Latin word misho, which means to send. So ikaw ay, kung ang vocare ay to call, ikaw ay tinawag. Ang mission naman ay ikaw ay pinadala. Ikaw ay... Uh, in-assign. Okay? Ikaw ay in-assign para gawin itong task na ito. Ito yung mission mo. Okay? So you were sent in the world to accomplish a mission. Okay? So teaching is your mission. That means it is the task entrusted to you in this world. So ikaw ay, ay, ikaw ay uh, inatasan na gawin itong mission na ito. Every teacher has its own unique mission, purpose, or objective that they need to accomplish. 
and we are expected to contribute to the betterment of this world in our own unique way. So what exactly is the mission to teach? Ano nga ba ang, ang, ang mission ng pagtuturo? What is exactly the mission to teach? According to Alfred North Whitehead, sabi niya, is it to help the child become the man of culture and of expertise? Pero sabi ni Bertrand Russell, is it to provide opportunities for the child's growth and to remove hampering influences? Diba? So maganda itong pag-usapan, no? Is it to help the child become the man of culture and of expertise? Yung merong values, yung merong attitudes, pero meron ding katalinuhan. Yun ba ang misyon ng pagtuturo? Sabi naman ni Russell, is it para mabigyan ng oportunidad yung mga bata to grow? Okay? To grow. At para matanggal yung mga obstructions para sa kanilang, para sa kanilang mga pangarap sa buhay. Okay? Bawa, education, sabi nila, education is always the key to success. Education can eliminate poverty. If you think that's the mission, that's your mission, then you are there teaching, thinking that your students are there looking at you and hoping that you could help them eliminate poverty in their families. Kung yun ang iniisip mo, that's a very good mission. So as of now, dapat pag-teacher ka, alam mo kung anong mission mo eh. Ano ba mission mo? Ngayon. O. So tulad ngayon, ano ba mission ko para sa inyo? O ang mission ko sa inyo ay para makatulong ako na kayo ay makakuha ng importanteng kaalaman na magagamit nyo pag kayo ay nagturo na o kaya naman ay pag kayo ay nag-take na ng licensure exam. Yun ang una kong mission eh. Yung matutunan nyo yung mga bagay-bagay na dapat yung matutunan pag kayo ay mag-take ng licensure exam. Yun muna. Hindi muna yung pagtuturo. Kasi Siyempre, lisensya muna ang gagamitin nyo. Eh. Ang kailangan nyo, yung lisensya muna. Okay? So, to teach is to influence every child entrusted in your care to become better and happier because life becomes more meaningful. To teach is to help child become more human. Okay? To become more human. This is a very progressivist point of view. So, look at this. No? Sabi dito, Dear teacher, I am a survivor of a concentration camp. My eyes saw what no man should witness. Gas chambers built by learned engineers, children poisoned by educated physicians, infants killed by trained nurses, women, women and babies shot and burned by high school and college graduates. So I am suspicious of education. Hmm. My request is help your students become human. Your efforts must never produce learned masters, skilled psychopaths, and ikmans. Reading, writing, arithmetic are important only if they serve to make our children more human. Napakaganda, no? Ito yata ay nangyari nung Holocaust, nung, ano, nung um, World War II, okay? kung saan maraming namatay na Jews. And maraming pinatay. And you know who, who killed those people? They are people who went to school. They were people who are learned, who knows a lot of things about engineering, about medicine, about taking care of sick people. But what did they do? No? They did not become human at all. So yun tinatawag natin na intellectual monsters. They are learned mas monsters, but they do not have the heart. So sabi nga niya, as a teacher, you help your students become human. So it's not always important to give them this, okay, for example, you're teaching mathematics. Okay, you know what calculus is, you know differentiation, you know uh, integration, or maybe you're teaching chemistry. You teach them atoms, molecules, covalent compounds, ionic compounds, and all. But what about them as a person? Were you able to influence them as a person? Natulad ngayon sa Pilipinas. Ang daming matatalino sa Pilipinas, no? Hmm. Lahat na lang may gustong sabihin. Dapat ganito ang gawin natin sa Pilipinas. Dapat ganito ang gobyerno. O kaya ang gobyerno naman, dapat ganito din ang gagawin. O. No offense. Dito ng PNP tsaka ng PIDEA. Diba? That was a very sad incident. Mismong dalawang ahensya ng gobyerno ang nagpatayan. But that was an accident. Although, there could be reasons why that accident happened. Okay? So, things like those. Dapat... Tayo, mas maging tao tayo, we become more human. So, yun ang aim dapat ng education. We help our learners or our students to become more human. 
So, is teaching a mission or a job? So, anong pagkakaiba niyan? Ayan. Hmm. If you're doing it because you're paid, it's a job. Oh. If you're doing it not only for the pay but for the service, it's a mission. Diba? Oh. Alam mo, di ka yayaman sa pagiging teacher. Totoo yan. Okay? Abigail, tama ba ako? Abigail, are you still here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, nakamit pala. Okay. Ako, sir. <laughs> Bakit? Sa tingin mo? Kasi for me, sir, um, experience ko po, sir, kasi ang dami ko ng mga co-teachers. Uh, mm. Hindi hindi sila naging ganun kayaman because of teaching. They become, they became successful because they have other, other. jobs. Like they, they have business. Oo, uh, tama yan. Okay. And mm. ang nangyayari pa, sir, ay ang daming mga naka, na, ano yun, ang dami nilang mga loans. Eh, yung, <laughs> yung nagiging net pay na lang nila ay uh, maabot na lang ng 8,000. Ganyan tama. Ganyan na yung, mm -hmm. yung gross pay nila ay nasa 24. 24, ganyan. oo. So, uh, oh. Tama yan. Okay. You know, sabi nga nila, mga teachers, eh, mahilig sa pumunta ng London. Diba? Kasi nga, London. Diba? Pupunta ng GSIS, pupunta ng banko, maglo-loan, pag-ibig. Lahat na yata napasokan na doon. Kasi nga, ang pagiging guro compared to other professions, it does not really offer lucrative lifestyle. Tulad ng pagiging doktor, pagiging lawyer. Ang nurse nga, ang nurse 130,000 plus na ang sahod. Samantalang ang teacher 122,000 ang basic pay. Mataas na yun siguro. Mataas na yun siguro. So at least, gumigin hawa ang buhay. Pero para masabi mo na yayaman ka pa, pag ikaw ay guro, no. That is very near to impossible. Okay? That's very impossible. Okay? So, but if you think it's a mission, then if you're doing it not only for the pay, but for the service, it's a mission. Iniisip mo na lang yung mga bata na matuturuan mo. Like, naturuan mo siya. O eh, ah, ah, ang tawag dito? Pag tumanda siya, doktor siya. O pag nagpa, ano ka, pag nagpagamot ka at incidentally, yung estudyante mo yun ang nag-check up sa'yo, Nilibre ka niya, is that not a very good investment also? O, di ba? So, yun na lang yung tignan natin. Pero I hope that in the next years, the government will be able to see the importance of teaching as a profession. That they would increase the salary. Um, I, I guess in 2023, not so near, not so far from now, the basic pay for teachers, for teacher 1, will be 27,000. Pag teacher 2, nasa 29,000. Pag teacher 3, nasa 31 plus na. So, medyo mataas na rin. Okay? So, continue. Work on it para makapasok kayo sa DepEd. Okay? So, if you quit because your boss or colleague criticize you, it's a job. If you keep on teaching out of love, it's a mission. When you go to DepEd, at pag naging teacher ka na, huwag mong expect na bebebihin ka. Huwag mong expect na magiging mabuti o magiging uh, that your worker, the co-work mates, I mean, your, your co-teachers and your boss will be very kind to you. Hindi. Okay? You expect the worst. Okay? Maraming mga pagkakataon sa organization na maraming mga hindi kaaya-ayang nangyayari. Sigawan, away, chismisan. So, if you cannot take that, just be silent. Okay? So, if you quit because your boss or colleague criticizes you, it's a job. But if you keep teaching out of love, it's a mission. If you teach because it does not interfere with your other activities, it's a job. But if you are committed to teaching, even if it means letting go of other activities, it's a mission. Tama yan. Ang daming pwedeng gawin, dapat gawin pag uwi mo ng bahay, pero hindi mo nagagawa kasi marami ka pang gagawin na related sa trabaho mo bilang teacher. Ito naman yung gusto ko. Tawag mo ka. Eh, yeah. Ito yata, yun. yun. Yun does not interfere. Yun, minsan nakakalimutan ng mga teachers yung love life nila. Di ba? May mga teachers, maraming teachers ang tumatandang dalaga kasi siguro nakalimutan na nila na maghanap pa ng makakasama sa buhay. Okay? So, let's, if you quit because no one praises or thanks you for what you do, it's a job. If you remain teaching even though nobody recognizes your efforts, it's a mission. It's hard to get excited about a teaching job, but it's almost impossible not to get excited about a mission. So if you think that teaching is your mission, you will be excited about it. 
An average school is filled by teachers doing their teaching job. A great school is filled with teachers involved in mission of teaching. So, ganun ka, ka crucial yung belief system ng teachers sa dapat mission ito para sa kanila. Hindi lang trabaho. Okay? Kasi kung trabaho yan, ihintayin mo lang yung 20, every 21st of the month na pumasok yung sahod mo sa, sa ATM mo. Hindi mo na inisip ano pang dapat mong gawin. So some teachers regard teaching as just a job. Others see it as their mission. Okay? So nai difference yung dalawang yun. So I would like to ask you, is it a mission or is just is it just a job for you? Okay? All right. Let's jump here. Okay. So that's teaching as a mission. Okay? So, yung profession kanina na pag-usapan natin, profession siya kasi ito yung mga kailangang uh, qualifications niya. So, look at this. Pwede na mentality versus excellence. So, pagiging guro, dapat hindi lang pwede na. Dapat excellence ang ating aim. Okay? So, ang pwede na ay it's an inimical to excellence. It is expressed in other ways like talagang ganyan yan wala na tayo magagawa. Maraming ganyan pagkakataon na mga mga bata, kunwari, mahina, I mean, subusuko na tayo, sasabihin na lang natin, talagang ganyan yan, wala ka na magagawa dyan. Pero meron, may magagawa tayo. Okay? Tandaan lang natin na, na ang mga bata ay mapag-uusapan sa principles of teaching yan. Learners have intellect. All of them have intellect. All of them have memory. But there are some factors kasi that differentiates them. And we have to look at that factors and to fill the gap on those factors so that we could in, it trigger their intellect and their memory. So all of these are indicators of defeatism and mediocrity. If we stick to this complacent mentality, excellence would not be within reach. So teachers should not be mediocre. But I mean, no mediocre teachers. And I hope that when you become teachers, you will not be among them. Okay? Uh, napaka-importante at crucial ng trabaho ng pagiging teacher. So, let me end my presentation in our module 1 with this passage by Dr. Joseph T. Bio. Siya ay sa DOST na ngayon at sa UP Nismed, if I'm not mistaken. Um, siya ay nanalo ng Intel Excellence in Teaching Award sa United States. And I, I had an opportunity to meet her once. Okay? And he is really a very smart woman. Mm. So, sabi niya, teaching may not be a lucrative position. It cannot guarantee financial security. It even means investing your personal time, energy, and resources. That's true. Sometimes it means disappointments, heartaches, and pains. But touching the hearts of people and opening the minds of children can give you joy and contentment which money could not buy. These are the moments I teach for. These are the moments I live for. That's according to Dr. Josette Bio. Okay? So, that's the end of my presentation in Module 1, The Teaching Profession, Teaching as a Vocation, as a Mission, and as a Profession. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir.